Praise God, church. Here we are again. Praise the Lord. Wednesday night, once again, through social media. And that's okay because we know that the Holy Spirit will help us. We'll take this word. We'll take our fellowship and our communion and we'll transmit it to every one of our hearts. You out there and and us over here, as uh, we bring you this message, this word today, uh, it's an exciting uh, day. And we know, you know, that nothing can separate us from the love of God, because that's what the word of God teaches us, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. In Christ Jesus, we are connected. We are united. Amen. Even though we are uh, going through stuff and uh and I can't tell you that I haven't felt it because Carmen and I uh sister Carmen and myself we have felt it as you know uh we've had to stay indoors all this time uh it's it's incredible that we have been locked up uh for almost 3 weeks uh and you know I also got to tell you and you know that uh, things like this have a tendency to uh, create short fuses. I'm sure that there's a lot of short fuses out there. But the good thing is that somehow, you know, the Holy Spirit helps us to, to bring it back <clears throat> to uh, the love of Jesus. And uh, we just make up, you know, it's it's really something. I mean, uh, Carmen and I can be having... An, an argument. We never fight, but we do have arguments. And and yet in three minutes, five minutes, it's like it, it never happened. And, and that's because, you know, the love for one another and also the love of God that's in our lives. But, you know, praise God. We're going to we're going to come out of this. We're we're going to make it to the other side. Amen. No matter what. Uh, now, I, I want you to do something. I want you to set your watch party. So I want you to get with that right now and uh, set your watch party and call uh, some people, you know, tag uh, some people and and also most important, gather your family uh, wherever you are. And I, I hope you are taking time, set time to, to be a part of this service, even though it's online, but also to receive the word. Amen. Because we know God is going to speak to us. And you know the word of God will minister to us. And strengthen us. And that's why we need today. We we need to hear from above. Amen. We're hearing a lot from the earth. But we need to hear a lot from our Lord Jesus. You know there, there's an old song. And Carmen and I were singing it the other day. You know we've come this far by faith. Uh, Notice uh, the, the lyrics of, of this little song. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. And then it says, oh, 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 can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. And it's amazing how... Uh, a, a little song like that, an old little song like that, can suddenly become new, can suddenly be a new thing in our lives. And you know, I have this uh, uh, this insight uh, from God that, that a lot of things that we thought at one time were old are going to start coming back. Remember, remember that old song, "Give Me That Old Time Religion." Well, let me tell you something. We're going to get all time religion. I don't, I don't mean just religion, you know, like, uh, some people, you know, think of religion. No, I'm talking about real faith. I'm talking about a real experience. I'm talking about real communion and fellowship with Jesus and also real prayer. A lot of that is going to start rising in our hearts and we're going to see a lot of that in the church because you know trials have a way of bringing out the best in us and sometimes it'll even go back there to the past and bring out some moments and teachings and truths that we have forgotten about that are important and you know this little song here you know we come uh, we we've come this far by faith i mean this thing 
uh, has been around for a long time, but it's, it's the message of real faith and the message of the Word of God. I was just talking with uh, Pastor Don Wilkerson, the brother of David Wilkerson, and you all know that these are spiritual fathers in my life, uh, fathers of faith uh, that God used in my life. And David Wilkerson is with the Lord, but Don Wilkerson uh, lives here in Virginia, about an hour and 20 minutes from us here. And uh, when he went up to New York, he contracted the, the coronavirus. He went up there on a ministry trip. He came back and he had the virus and uh, it, it got pretty bad, affected his wife uh, and him. His wife went through the thing with flying colors. She's okay, but he had to be hospitalized with high fevers and, and the beginnings of pneumonia and so forth. But, you know, we started praying. Everybody began to pray. And today... Brother Don is at home. Talked to him yesterday. He sounded so strong and so great because we know that God answers prayer. And this is, this is the praying that we need to do for one another and also for other brothers and sisters that are out there that we know, like our neighbor, Pastor, Pastor Glenn. We need to continue to pray for him. So, you know, today I'm going to take you to the book of Daniel. We're going to go to the Old Testament, the book of Daniel, to a story that uh, is as old as the Word of God. It's a, a story that has been around uh, for ages and ages. Of course, it's the Word of God, but it's been in the church. It's, it's one of the most uh, favorite stories in, in uh, children's church or, or you, you know, a Sunday school uh, for for years and years, and yet it doesn't get old. And the reason why it doesn't get old, two things, because it's the Word of God, and secondly, because we all relate to this story, because we all relate to trials and tribulations. We all relate to the circumstances uh, that we are experiencing even now, and so also the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember those three guys? Remember those three guys that were cast into the fiery furnace? Well, we're going to be talking somewhat about that. Uh, let's read from God's Word. And I'm going to read quite a few verses. And I was thinking about this. You know, I like to read uh, the Bible to you. I like to read the Word of God because it is the Word of God. Uh, you know, that's what Jesus did when he went to the temple and he read from the book of Isaiah. He, he just didn't go in there to preach a sermon. He read the word. The Bible says he read from the book of Isaiah. How much did he read? We really don't know. But that's the way it was done during those days. And here in Daniel chapter 3, verse 13 uh, and we're going to read down to verse 18. Here's what it says. Then Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the, the gold image which I have set up. Remember, he had set up a great gold image and then he gave orders to the whole nation that everyone under his authority and power and kingship were to bow their knees before this idol, before this uh, image that he had built, which was an image of himself, and to make it... Uh, 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 enticing for the people he even put together special music so that they could bow their knees before this idol and, and there fall down uh, before this false god now if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn flute harp lyre and psaltery and symphony with all kinds of music and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, which I have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Wow. 
What a tremendous threat. What a tremendous command here. Can you imagine? Either you're going to bow your knees to in the music and, and to this false idol, or you are going to die. For notice what it says. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand. Notice this, O king. But if not, if not, if by any chance he doesn't deliver us. This is what the, 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 the uh, Hebrew children are saying here. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. You know, praise God. Thank God for his word. And I pray that you will receive the word of God. I pray, Holy Spirit, even now, make your word, Father, real to each one that is tuning in to this program right now, that they will receive the power and the anointing and the inspiration of the Word of God. We give you praise and glory. Amen. Now today, like all the times that, that you know, I bring you uh, a word, I want to make sure that whatever I share with you is a word from God. I want to make sure that that's what you're receiving. <clears throat> you know, uh, it takes me time to get messages like this together, to bring it together. And that's because, you know, I, I look for the mind of God. I seek the mind of God. I, I, I don't want to give you what man is saying. I want to give you what thus saith the Lord. What is God saying to us? It, right now, what is God saying to you? What, what What's the word that you are receiving? And you know that God speaks to us today by the Holy Spirit, and also by the Word. If you're going to hear from God, if you really need to hear from God, you don't need to go to a man to hear from God. You go to the Word of God. And that's why when I deliver a message to you, I want to make sure that I go to the Word of God that is inspired by the Holy Spirit so that we can receive whatever He has for us. That is so important. Amen. So, uh, uh, during this time, during this, uh, we're in the Wednesday night service. Uh, I have titled this message, uh, In the Fire with Jesus. In the Fire with Jesus. Because really all of us are in the fire with Jesus. And first of all, you know, we got to know that none of us, none of us as God's people are exempt from fiery trials. This life is filled with fiery trials, tribulations, testings, call it whatever you want to call it. But as Christians and as God's people, we are all, we are all subjected to the circumstances in this world. We haven't been raptured yet, but one day it will happen. Amen. See, trials are part of our walk with God. They're just part of our walk with the Lord. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 2, Beloved, do not think it strange. Notice that. Do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, test you, as though some strange thing, notice, some strange thing happened to you. Don't pretend. Don't pretend. You know, don't, don't, uh, don't think that what's happening to you is something strange. It's not strange. I mean, I wish that I can tell you that as Christians uh, uh, and, and someone that loves Jesus, you don't have to be concerned about trials, that you don't have to be concerned about your faith being tested. Because if, if I say that to you, then I'm lying to you. Because everybody that walks with God is going to have trials. We will have testing. Jesus said it. The apostles uh, teach it. The Word of God teaches it. That's, that's part of our walk with God. That's part of our faith. And we go back to First Peter chapter 1, verse 6. 
uh, through verse 9, notice what it says. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if it need be, you have been grieved by various trials, different kinds of trials, even like what we're going through right now that, you know, the nation is experiencing and also the church, the church together with every unbeliever person out there is, is under this attack that I personally believe is coming straight from the very pit of hell. That the genuineness, the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And verse 8 says, uh, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory, receiving, notice, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. That's the ultimate. That is the salvation of our souls. Hallelujah. And what is the word talking about? The salvation of our souls could be a victory here, but also the final uh, uh, chapter in life. And that's when we are going to be with Jesus. And my Bible says, you know, that no matter what we go through in this life, if we love the Lord, we are going to experience a wonderful celebration in heaven. Amen. The Bible says they're going to come from the four corners of the world, praising God with a wonderful song. Now, why does God allow trials? Why does God allow trials? Three things that I want to give you. First, trials refine us. Trials refine us. Remember that Peter compares <clears throat> uh, our faith to gold. And, and, and gold can only be uh, gold unless it is refined. It, it has to be cleansed and it's got to be shaped. So trials in the Bible you're going to find that are always related to fire. Trials are all, always related to fire, the, the fire of this life. And, and this is because fire is what reveals the true substance uh, that faith in God is made out of. There is a substance that faith is made out of. So listen to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good testimony. By, by that faith, by that substance that our faith in God contains and, and holds us together and strengthens us. Amen. And we, through that faith, were able to believe God for results and the evidence of the faith that we have in Christ Jesus. Again, 1 Peter 1, verse 7, that the genuineness, no, notice, notice these superlative words that the Word of God uses, uh, that uh, the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So God is uh, here. Gold is, we know it to be one of the most precious uh, metals in the world. But, you know, gold doesn't become precious just like that. It's found in the rough. It's found in the mines of the earth, and then it's taken, and then it is put through the testing. It is put through the fire, where then all the debris or whatever uh, should not be a part of that precious piece of metal will leave, and it will just disintegrate so that that, that gold can become precious, and it can become what, what God intended for that to be. And it's the same thing with our lives. 
You know, we are in the rough when we come to Jesus. Then we come to the Lord, we get saved, and then God begins to work in us. And it's the trials of this life, the fires of this life. Now, the difference between gold is that gold can't perish, but our faith will never perish. It will never self-destruct. It will never be destroyed. And that is because our faith is founded on the living God. So it's way better, way beyond than precious gold, but it is precious. And that's why Peter compares it to gold. The second reason why God, God allows trials to come is to cause your faith to reach into, and I want you to listen to this very carefully, cause your faith to reach into the revelation of the unseen work of God in us and through us. Because whatever God does in us, he is going to manifest it. It's going to be manifested openly and other people will be able to rejoice and be a part of the work that God is doing in your life. And I'm sure that as we have been facing uh, uh, this trial with the coronavirus, it, it has caused the church to pray like never before. In matter of fact, I know for a fact that you've been praying like never before. I, I've been talking to people on the phone. It's amazing the fellowship we have. It's amazing the things that are coming out, uh, the conversations that we uh, that we are having. That w if it would not be for what is happening now, not that we desire this. But, you know, my Bible tells me that all things work together for them that love God. In the middle of trial, in the middle of the fire, God is going to bring out that precious goal. God's going to bring out that precious value out of us. Amen. And we're going to be speaking things that we never thought we would be talking. And also we would be praying like we have never prayed before. And we are going to be receiving revelation because what happens when the pressure takes place, we receive the revelations. Uh, of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we can pass it on to others. Again, we go back to Peter. First Peter chapter 1, verse 8 and 9 says, Whom having not seen, you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Now I'm reading that again and again because I want you to, to really catch it. You see, how can you have joy when you're being tried? How can you have joy when, when let's say this virus, God forbid, uh, any of us are attacked by this thing? How can we rejoice in the middle of that? How can Christians who are going through this stuff right now still rejoice because that's what the, the Bible says, who having not seen, you love. You still love God, no matter what. In, in your trial, you love God. Though now you do not see Him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith. Because what you are going through right now is going to turn into something great and something wonderful to the glory of God. Listen, when Jesus was at Gethsemane, and we we all know that this is Holy Week, and we are celebrating uh, Gethsemane. We are celebrating the Last Supper. We're celebrating the cross of Jesus and what Jesus did for us on that cross. But, you know, the Bible tells us that when Jesus was, was at Gethsemane praying, the Bible says he sweated drops of blood. <clears throat> He sweated drops of blood. That's how much the pressure was upon our Lord Jesus. Tremendous, hard pressure. Because Jesus was seeing, looking into the spirit world, he was seeing what he was going to suffer, what he was going to go through, but yet he was also looking at you and me because it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, Hebrews 12, 2, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And then third, 
third reason why God allows fiery trials is to make you a better godly person. So James says, my brethren, James chapter 1 verse 2 uh, says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces, notice, produces, notice, produces, notice that again, produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Hallelujah. This is what a trial produces in the life of the believer. Now, to the world, to, to the ungodly and the unbelieving world, they can't see this. They, they, they will go through the trial, and they will go through the suffering, and they want to take their lives, and they want to go out and do crazy stuff. They just give up, throw the towel in. That's because they don't have this revelation of God's Word to them that love Jesus, to them that are in the Lord. This is what takes place in our lives. So in conclusion here, in conclusion, as we get a little deeper here into the fiery trials uh, of, of our lives, you see, when believers face trials, you're never alone. Believers are never alone. God always makes a way to overcome. Here's what the Bible says, Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Wow. You know, right now, a lot of people are worrying, anxious, full of fear. The Bible says that. God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, a spirit of a sound mind. Amen. In the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, faith in God says God will take care of his own. God will always be with his own. He will always be with his people. You know, Jesus told his disciples, go preach the gospel. I will be with you always. Always God will be with us. Amen. And, and, and that's because we have something the world does not have. We have a holy faith. We have, I can say, we have a perfect faith, an indestructible faith in the Lord Jesus Christ so that so that when we pray, we know that we can pray with power. This is why James, James, uh, writes to the church. And one of the things that, uh, uh James tells the church, uh, when, when the church, uh, prays is to pray, building up your most holy faith, building up your most holy faith. And that holy faith is perfect faith. That's the faith that not only gets you safe, but it's the faith that holds you together. It's the faith that walks with you. You know, when Paul says, I don't walk by sight, I walk by faith. You know, trusting in the living God. Amen. That's the faith that you hold on to no matter what. That was the faith of the three Hebrew children when they were cast into that fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Listen to what the Word of God says, and I'm almost finished here. Daniel chapter 3, verse 24 and 25 says, uh, Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste, and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king, look, he answered, I want you to see something here. I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they're not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Wow. What a tremendous impact this was, not only to the king, but also to his entire kingdom. Remember that the king gave orders. Okay, you don't want to bow before me. Uh, you don't want to be like everybody else. Then I'm going to cast you into this fiery furnace. And I'm going to make it seven times worse. And the Bible says that even some of the men that bound uh, 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 Meshach and Shadrach and Abednego, and when they went to cast them into the fire, they 
also were dragged by the tongues of fire, by the flames of fire, because were so hot, they were consumed automatically. And after that, the Bible doesn't say anything about them. They were burned to death, caught up in this fire. But the three young men that were cast in the fire, the Bible says that they were in the fire and in the midst of the fire, there was also the Son of Man who is Jesus and he was dancing with them in that very fire that killed all of those other men. Why was that? Because Meshach and Shadrach and Abednego had this holy faith. They were walking in the fire with Jesus. And really that is our safety. That is our assurance. That is our security. Amen. You know, the Bible says that God has given every man a measure of faith. But not every man builds up their faith. Not everybody builds up their faith. When you build up your faith, then you bring it to that level of your most holy faith. And that's the faith that we're called to stand on. Amen. As we are in the fire with Jesus, as we face uh, the coming days uh, as the body of Christ, but also individually. That's the faith that Carmen and I are standing on. Amen. We're not standing on nothing else but that holy faith. That's my faith in the Lord Jesus. When I get up in the morning, that's the faith that, that brings me to the reality of the presence of God that I am in the presence of God. Amen. As I walk throughout the day and I hear all the bad news, oh, I'm, I'm filling my ears also with the word of God because that's the faith uh, that keeps me strong. Amen. And stable and full of joy to serve God no matter what the world is going through. So I pray that you will ask the Lord to help you build up this faith. And how do you, how do you build it up? You build it up by going to the Word of God. Go to the Word of God. Read the Bible. Listen, you got plenty of time on hand right now. Read the Word. And then pray and ask God to make that Word a reality in your life. And then learn how to praise God for that faith in your life. To thank Him for His goodness and His faithfulness in your life. Well, God bless you. And I hope that you have received something uh, from this word as you have opened your heart. I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray that God will bless you and, and just draw you closer to Jesus in this time, in this season of testing. Father, I pray for my brothers, my sisters. I pray for the New Life Outreach family, Lord, that you will draw them closer to you, Father, as you draw close to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget, this Sunday, we are going to have Easter celebration drive-in style like we did last Sunday, and we're going to have a great time. See you there. God bless you.